come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Hey, do us a favor, wherever you found us, go on over and hit that like or subscribe button. Hit the little uh, bell there on YouTube, whatever we can do to get notifications uh, from our episodes. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. We like to hear from you. You can uh, write in later for Igor's mailbag. We'll tell you how you can do that later on in the show uh but these are the internet radio superstars holly michaela sean and i'm colin and tonight taking a cue from hallmark's christmas theme on halloween (laughs) holly (laughs) what did we watch tonight tonight we watched a movie called now give me a minute i have to I'm going to get this wrong, but Night Killer, get them all. Yeah. Night Killer, also known as Non Aprit Que La Porta 3, a.k.a. Do Not Open That Door 3. <laughs> Ollie, I, I can't tell you how proud I am that I'm not the only person bringing Italian horror movies to the Saturday Night Freak <laughs> Show. Well, Sean brought Shocking Dark. Yeah, uh, I, I bring them by the same people and I get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> so, so whatever. That was shocking. Dark, aka Terminator Two. The Italians have this. Uh, the Italians, God bless them, they have a knack for making some of the best worst movies uh, ever made. What year was this one made? Uh, believe it or not, this was 1990. I know it doesn't. It's a lie. Like Don't believe it. No. It no it's way. A goddamn lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's at least no. 85. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I mean, to be real, it probably took. I mean, honestly, there's not a lot of information on the background of this, but it probably took a couple of years because this was this was filmed, and then there was reshoots for gore. So it probably did take a couple of years. So I mean, realistically, it probably was filmed in like '88. I'm I'm guessing. I don't know. Well, before we can do a documentary called "Reshoots for Gore" yeah. about yeah. all these movies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, that brings us to the director. Well, wait, before we go yeah. there, I was just wondering okay. if we can really quick. So you said this is Don't Open the Door 3. What yeah. happened to Don't Open the Door 1 and 2? <laughs> no one listened the, and they the, kept opening that door. <laughs> They're probably called zombie. No. I'm guessing. The, this like, one has no, a better. You know, just the way the Italians are, this is the sequel to uh, uh, Zombie 2 somehow. Nope. Oh, it's a sequel. Or a sequel, all right. <laughs> uh, this was supposed to be an unofficial sequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> I can't even say it without laughing. <laughs> yeah, don't op- don't open that door. <laughs> is the Italian title of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, and so this what this came out ironically the same year as leatherface texas chainsaw yes. massacre three so i can't imagine what happened in italy when two movies with the same title opened <laughs> did they retitle the Double legit features. uh texas I, chainsaw I three that i don't know i don't know if they retitled that because this is de- this definitely came out with that title in italy so i don't know what did when the actual sequel came out and now having seen the movie, we go, what did this have to do at all? What made them think <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Well, they would just put doesn't matter, Colin. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's Italian. <laughs> yeah. It does not matter. It, Italians do whatever they want. Hence me bringing this movie to the freak show because mm. I'm Italian. I do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> oh, and weren't these filmmakers ridiculed for the rest of their lives? Well, that's your fate now, too. Well, we're going to find out. So who is the director of uh, Don't Open the Door 3, a.k.a. Night Killer? Officially, the director is Claudio Fergasso. Oh, you, you yeah. may You may remember from such gems as Troll 2. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He did some other stuff too, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, Claudio Fergasso, uh, well, he was in uh, a movie called The Best Movie Ever Made, which was about the, uh, the you know, there was a kind of a documentary on the resurgence of popularity of Troll 2. It's great. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. But he made movies under the name Clyde Anderson. 
That's right. And so we would know him as the director of Alice Cooper's Monster Dog, which still has yet to make it to the Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Uh, here eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> Wait, oh, oh, wow, monster dog. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that neither Colin or Sean have brought that. To be honest, as much as they love Alice Cooper, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a. Blind Ooh, the spot. poster looks good for Monster Dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he also made um a movie that I have heard about but never actually seen called Rats Night of Terror. I think he has done some of the zombie movies or whatever. But there uh you were so Claudio Fergrasso is the credited director, but there's yes. a second director. The uncredited director Bruno Mate. Mate, I'm sorry, is it Mate? Mate? I'm Matei. sorry, I don't remember. We've just Matei. been calling okay. him Matei. You're you're yeah. of Italian descent. I would figure that you would have. Well, it. I think it's I, I, <laughs> I, I, assume it's, I assume it's Matei, but I feel like anytime I try to pronounce the name, they're like, that's wrong. So whatever. I think it's Matei, but um who you may remember from our episode on Shocking Dark. <laughs> and Dark's there it is. So do bitter. You, do so you guys bitter remember? Place. Yeah, this is not allowed, I don't think. <laughs> so this has got to be in the bottle. Not mad at this. <laughs> you guys are all just gonna recommend it, and I'm gonna be like, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you gotta asshole. go back and listen to our Sean's shocking. Sean's gonna not recommend it out of revenge for shocking dark. <laughs> yeah. Um, shocking uh, dark was a movie that was like a uh, a cross a hybrid between Aliens and Terminator, which came out in Italy as Terminator Two, and I think uh, Claudio Fergrasso uh, was a co writer on that movie. Also, yeah, he was. Yeah, and uh, that episode was so divisive, we made a T shirt for it. Which you can buy at tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show. There is a Shocking Dark t-shirt. Yeah. Did you survive That's Shocking right. Dark? Let the world know by buying a t-shirt. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Bruno Bate was brought in to shoot the gore scenes for this movie. Because believe it or not, Claudio Fergasso did not have gore in this movie in his interpretation. The producers insisted that uh, it needed more than what he was going for. So they brought in Bruno to shoot all of the gore scenes. It's weird. So how like, was he killing people then? Like not, uh, was he just punching a clean hole through them or something? Yeah. I I, I, th I think it was, um, I don't know how, the, I, I want to say it was just like off shot or maybe it was like strangulation. I'm not sure what his cut in, included because his cut was a psychological thriller as he likes to view it. Oh yeah, Claudio is great because uh, <laughs> I mean he really does think, and this is kind of why these Italian movies uh, transcend, you know, send up kind of parody uh, movies that try to be goofy like this. Like they're so sincere. Like he believes that Troll Two, and I'm sure this, you know, is like yeah. uh, a great psychological drama, and we're all just idiots because oh, yeah. uh, we haven't interpreted it right, or we haven't I interpreted. Mean I mean, I know we, we haven't gotten into it yet, but like just, just from the ending, you know, in his mind, he was like, this is my Shutter Island ending. I don't know this was before <laughs> that, but yeah, you know, in his mind, this is his Shutter Island. <laughs> oh man, it's great. Um, yeah. So, so I'm going to guess that the, that there were no murder scenes probably at all in the, like that whole cold open, yeah. I'm guessing is Bruno Mattei, the stalking yeah. scenes of, uh, the scientist in the whaling institute whatever that which was basically the discovery <laughs> center you know they're like no she yeah. has to go check the flow valve okay that whole stuff is all probably uh yeah. Bruno Mate's, uh <laughs> influence just saying things and i'm i'm like what oh yeah the, wait this, we just watch this movie this <laughs> this movie is like this movie's like COVID. It started years ago <laughs> we got to the end we don't know what shape we're in or where we are oh yeah, it's something else. It's, it's a roller coaster it, no, ride. You're, Sean, you're right. If 2020 was a movie, this would be it. <laughs> All right, well, let's That's take the we best review you could give of that movie right there. <laughs> right? All right, episode over. <laughs> Cheers. Well, it's been fun. <laughs> yeah. For the folks at home that haven't experienced the wonders of Night Killer, well, I mean, that's a bad title, but you know. Um, so this movie, so, okay. So you know, it starts off cold open. We're in a, um, theater where a dance troupe is enthusiastically, uh, per rehearsing. No, they're being yelled at for not being enthusiastic. I have to ask, 
did you all appreciate that I gave you a warning that you didn't miss anything? That was actually the opening. Yes, because my husband okay. said that. He goes, oh, this is how this starts. He was like, there's no credits or anything. I was like, no, I was warned. Yeah. I had to check, like, because I, I look, obviously we watched it on YouTube, but I checked the Tubi version too. I was like, okay, I, this isn't right. And nope, that's how it starts. But yeah. so much happened in this movie. I forgot that's how this movie started. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. Tr- okay, you're going to have to help me here because I might be sketchy on some of this, but I do remember the dance open. Sean's right. They were being berated by an angry dance instructor who yeah. was mad at one dancer for showing up late. <laughs> She sends her off to the dressing room to get uh, changed. And in the dressing room, she is attacked by Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Via New Nightmare. Yeah. it's uh, <laughs> But not really. Well, this is but before, this is before New Nightmare. This is before New it. Nightmare. Yeah. But it's a guy with a burned face and uh, clawed hands, right? In a black That's, trench coat. I don't think burned face is describing it well. It, no, he looks like a Star Trek villain. It it is I think it is like a cheap knockoff uh, Freddy Krueger mask. I think it's the is. Italian. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, they can, I, even no, their masks really, suck. Yeah, I think uh. it's the Italian Freddy Krueger mask because like I, all the stuff that I read about it, they're going with like the Freddy Krueger mask. So I was like, okay, like I guess it's like burnt to a crisp, Freddy. Like, like yeah. ten shades darker than actual Freddy Krueger. <laughs> yeah, I sat there because I asked them like, is this like is this supposed to be like a Freddy Krueger burned? Crapsy kind of guy, or is it supposed to be a guy in a mask? Because they're not hiding it. It looks like a Halloween mask. Right. And I'm like, it, oh my! And it wow, takes, <laughs> this it takes can't a be. Good, <laughs> it takes a good chunk of time before we find out, like that it's supposed to be a dude in a mask. Yeah, not like, they, a bad they ride makeup that effect for a while. Yeah, well, and none of the like the the face doesn't move or anything, which you can't tell in the beginning if that's because it's supposed to be a mask or just because this movie's cheap as shit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the charm, right? <laughs> and he kills her by punching his clawed hand right through her midsection. He doesn't like come out with the heart. That's what you need to sell that. You can't just punch a whole bloody hole in somebody. But that's his method of killing people. This psycho punches holes in him with his razor fingers, which of course are like plastic, uh, you know, rubber or something, and they're <laughs> falling all over the place. It's like, I mean, wow. that's that is some brute force. Like, yeah, they never they never touch on that. Like, it's just a normal thing for that to happen. That's not normal. Th- no, in the, that's in hard Italy, to do, Ollie. You'd be surprised. Oh, I'm sorry. I've yeah. never been to Italy. So <laughs> yeah, it's like shaking hands over there. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> um, well, I mean, this how are you? <laughs> Yeah, we're just right through the midsection. Um, so he, the, the dancer is killed, and then the the killer goes after the instructor, who hilariously, oh like, my god, in this long take, goes She's on this flummoxed. tirade. What? She's very flummoxed. Yeah, so much so that uh, she it almost does play like she's just buying time, like she forgot her lines. It's like fuck it. I can't do it anymore. I'm leaving this scene. You do it instead of me. And she exits. Yeah. The- <laughs> I feel like that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. She's full on ad libbing. Like it, that is improv at its worst. It's oh, it's bad. I but think then- she's just having a breakdown. She's like, no, film them. Not me. <laughs> I can't do it. Going to my room. And she and that, discovers that made, the, oh. Oh, that, yeah, that made me laugh enough. But then when she comes in contact with the actual killer and her like death scene, fucking hell oh yeah because they're going for like uh you know it's like I, I, argento can do this he does these camera tricks with the one camera and it follows people around so they're in this theater and they're she they're tracking her down a balcony you know it's supposed to be the killer's point of view and it like it, it's an extended shot there's not like any kind of technical expertise going on here which you know is what you would expect if you're going to do a long shot it's just like okay sure. we'll just do it for long until she goes over the the balcony, right? Having been her throat's been cut. I love that she, when she comes out of the dressing room, she's holding her stomach, and then she's like, "Oh!" And then she starts grabbing her throat, like she forgot, you know, <laughs> like, "Oh no, it's my throat." I for- I forgot. I was like, "Wait, where did she get cut?" Like I couldn't remember. I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> it's a it's a class act. She goes over. Oh, she falls God. to her death, and all of the dancers stop in unison on a beat and freeze in a kind of mouth, <laughs> hand over the mouth, like, <gasps> "Oh, it's fair!" And this is where we knew what it's kind beautiful. of movie we were in for, right here. <laughs> it could only have been better if, like, the music to the dance scene 
had hit its big, big ending crescendo right at the moment she hit. Did I? Dun. Yeah. I gotta tell better. you. I gotta tell you. When I was looking into this movie, I watched the full opening, and after the freeze frame, I shut it off. I was like, "I'm saving it. We're watching this." <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, the uh, plot itself kicks in uh, at post credits here, and. Um, Okay, so we're centering ourselves on the character of Monica, Melissa, Melanie, Melanie, Melanie. Beck. Melanie Beck. Yes. Because she, she looks like Melania. That'll be easy to remember. She, she does. does. She really does. Yeah. And you, of course, horror f- aficionado, recognize, oh, sorry, your name is Tara Brockman. Uh, oh, what is it? It's Tara, uh, Tara Buckman. Tara Buckman, the yeah. star. She was the mom in Silent Night, Deadly Night. So she has also been on the Saturday Night Freak Show twice now. So let's see if we can put her on the wall. Of For another now. Christmas movie. <laughs> there yeah, you go. I did not realize this was a Christmas movie. I didn't That's until we were like, who would? <laughs> yeah, way into it. And then in the end of the movie, it's like Christmas explodes on the screen. There's yeah. uh, all sorts of holiday <laughs> decorations and Christmas trees and Christmas gifts. And you're like, wow, okay, here we are. It's my on way Halloween. of, yeah, it's my way of saying happy Halloween and welcoming you to the next holiday season. It's like your nightmare mm-hmm. before Christmas, right there. You're like, <laughs> you're like Joanne Fabrics. You're putting out the Christmas during the Halloween. Mm-hmm. You mean, yes. calm down, Holly. The tree decorations are next to the candy. It's all there yeah. for you. <laughs> Happy no. holiday. All inclusive. Oh. So Watch who is... is don't open till Christmas. That'd mm-hmm. be a great Christmas yeah. double feature. Well, that the end of this good. movie actually did remind me of don't open till Christmas, but we'll, we'll get there with a lot of what's in the box. Um, <laughs> the uh, Okay, so uh, Melody back. Melanie. It, Melanie Beck is a uh, house. I don't think she she's a housewife. She didn't work. I don't think right. Her husband is it her husband that she keeps getting these phone calls. She's getting calls from two guys. Mysterious yeah. phone calls. There's a guy who I think is her ex husband or her husband who we only see from behind. He's got greased back hair and a black leather jacket, and he talks like Chuck Connors in Tourist Trap. Melody. <laughs> I'll be coming home later, <laughs> Melody. Melanie. Yeah. But then she's also getting calls from the supposed night killer. Who? How does he talk? About the same. Yeah. <laughs> I am the night killer. He should have just said that. But like essentially how I sound. That's how he sounds. <laughs> <laughs> true. Very true. But he says stuff like, I'm too horny. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because the first scene that this happens. Okay, so this this is another, you know, I mean, we're, we're just backing these things up back to back. Uh, she's uh, She does have neighbors that she's friendly with, this blonde dude and his wife uh, that uh, take off and go to work in the morning during the credits, which is kind of like uh, out of an 80s sitcom and scored really that is. way. <laughs> Cool <laughs> titles popping up. Everyone's doing their little turns to the camera. And she gets a call from her husband who's somewhere else. And basically like she says, I can't take this anymore. And she hangs up on him while he's in a bar and he crushes a can or a a bottle because he's so upset. Yeah, he's like out drinking. Okay, so obviously we're not going to like get into it because we need to, you know, go through the movie first. But this scene is very confusing to me now that I know the end of the movie. I don't understand. At all. Like, are, are they estranged? I Art. think they have some kind of sadomasochistic uh, relationship going on that is clearly, just f- f- yeah. That's why it's a psychological uh, thriller because Claudio, you know, for Grasso, he's he's right. looking at you know he's trying to do like the next Basic Instinct or something here, probe the depths of the the twisted sadomasochistic uh, sexual mind. Um, so this is all play this between her husband and her at the beginning at the beginning because what you're she hangs up at on the beginning, him. yeah that's, that's what i mean at the beginning she hangs up on him and then she goes and stands in a mirror and like takes her top off starts oh, caressing her breast and starts looking in the mirror saying <laughs> something like melanie you're alone this is all you're gonna be and blah 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 you know, and you're like what the fuck is happening in this I movie mean, don't you don't you usually stand in front of your mirror topless fondling yourself saying this is your life 
Like, th- isn't that something you do every day? I mean, I know Sean well, does. I mean, right? I would if, if I could, but. I mean, I anything's mean, obviously. possible in 2020. I can't rule it out anymore, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. So we're not judging. If you do that, you know, you be you. Whatever. Right. Well, the, the the boundaries are a little different in COVID times, so. Yeah. You know, you do you, boo. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, you fondle yourself in front of a mirror. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, you're not, you're not hurting anybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> But it's weird to watch when it's in a movie and you're like, I don't know what the hell's going on here. But clearly this is a troubled uh, woman who then gets the call like uh, while she's topless. Right. Gets the call from the night killer who's like, I'm really horny in it, you know. And so she goes to the window and looks out and there's a guy in the phone booth across the street because she's like, who's, who's looking at it? But then it turns out, that no, she has two lines in the house. And the the killer is in the house and calling her because this is a call back to when a stranger calls or something like that, right? And yep. he attacks her. Well, let's not. I mean, we skipped over a little bit where, where you know she does go to the mirror and and start undressing and following herself, but she also stays that way for the <laughs> next five minutes. <laughs> like she goes to answer the phone and she's just like hanging out. And while the guy is saying, like, I can see you, and and she just remains that way. But see, again, knowing what we know later, maybe this was part of her (laughs) Uh, hang-up. Yeah, she just, like, turns... Yeah, she just turns full on like breasts out like you can. Like <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> a strong turn to the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's attacked by this guy and uh, you know, the night killer in full get up as Freddy Krueger or whatever. Um and we don't see the conclusion of this scene, I don't believe. Uh so we don't actually know what happens. <laughs> what scene are you talking about? The, the that's scene. like every scene yeah the first rapey scene the first one the first rapey scene okay yeah because it's established by news broadcast by these extremely uh aggressive uh news camera people who are reporting throughout the movie on the 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 murders that are happening or the crimes that are happening <laughs> that she's been raped by the dude and like uh and oh she was saved by the uh the blonde guy you know right got his face right. cut we don't get to see this whole scene but he's yeah, like i got see the, yeah yeah i got i stopped the attack and got you know but i didn't get to see the guy's face because he came at me with a knife and you know all this jazz and so she gets whisked off to the hospital where it turns out that she's got a case of amnesia and doesn't remember anybody including yeah. the killer or her daughter clarissa yeah. clarissa yeah Clarissa is a precocious 13 year old. She goes to live with the, uh, the neighbors played by Melissa mm. Joan Hart. Serious. No, <laughs> oh, okay. no, that was a nineties Nickelodeon <laughs> joke. Yeah. It's not for you, Kyle. Yeah, not for you. <laughs> Clarissa explains it all. It's a great show. <laughs> well, then the movie starts going even in goofier ways. Uh, well, I mean, we are introduced to like a Dr. Loomis type character or something. He's the shrink who's, uh, giving That's a generous way to describe it. Well, uh, I, I love it's... slash hate this guy. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's because two people. I'm... Oh, sorry. Go okay. ahead. No, go ahead. Because well, uh, I won't go ahead. <laughs> well, there's two people that are basically in charge of solving the the spate of murders that are happening. There's the detective who has some great fucking lines in this movie, including like, God damn it. I'm a cop. I work with these. He pulls out guns. <laughs> such classes as <laughs> such classics as fuck. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, what was they were on the phone with the killer at one point. It's one of those classic scenes in the police, uh, you know, headquarters where the killer's on the uh, calls, you know, Sergeant, it's him. So everybody gets on the phone, and then, uh, the, the psychiatrist ties talking to the lunatic, and like, you know, it's like, well, you got to bring back Mrs. Br- uh, Bar, what's her name? Uh, Melody, uh, Beck. Uh, Beck. Beck, bring Beck. back Mrs. Beck, and, uh, the cop just cuts in as like, if you don't tell us where she is, motherfucker, I'm going to come over there and rearrange your face. And then, like, he hangs up. I was like, did we get him? Well, he does. And the sergeant's like. to the guy in the hotel. Like, he reaches across the counter and says, motherfucker, I'll rearrange your face. Mm. Well, what do you say to the killer, then? And that, and that's it. It was something similar. But some, they, some version of that. He doesn't, he doesn't deviate from that pattern very much. Well, they yeah. were, they're not able to trace the call. You get the, the disappointed, you know, it's like, Sergeant, I'm sorry. We, you know, the call wasn't long enough. And he just turns toward the camera almost, waits and goes, fuck. 
Oh, it's... <laughs> We're approaching samurai cop level of. Uh, I, I love someone who can deliver a good fuck, <laughs> and you can did. quote me on that. <laughs> that's a. All, Sean? That's you know a t-shirt what? right there, Sean, Michaela. That's a t-shirt. That is absolutely. That's a t-shirt right there. <laughs> <laughs> someone who can deliver a good fuck. Okay. Yep. But I'm gonna make I'm gonna make fuck really big on the shirt and everything Thank else you. slightly. Small. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the way to go. So you'll have to get absurdly close to someone in personal space to read the whole thing, you know? <laughs> like, like, right, yeah. Read that wait, shirt. wait, what does that say? Yeah, I, it's ideal in COVID times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the, then there's the psychiatrist who he also goes off, uh, I think, on the news media at some point and tells like extremely uh, personal uh, graphic details. What was the line? Uh, it's like, well, she was, uh, we found an oh. inordinate <laughs> the, wait, amount of no. semen in her. Yes. Wait, no, it was an inordinate amount of seminal fluid. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is not, I mean, this is one of those things where it's just like, we pull away from the TV and you can hear still them talk, still hear them talking. And that's one of the lines that kind of just floats right. out of the background. <laughs> and it's great. I'm just like, what? you got to catch it. You're like, wait, what? what? I'm sorry. Yeah. What are they saying on the news? <laughs> on the news? An inordinate amount of seminal fluid. Is this the late night news? What is this? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like that's weird. not details you would give at a press conference. I feel like that's something you would kind of hold back. You yeah. know, yeah. that's not something you just throw out there. But they're just, I mean, but they're just kind of like, they're bloviating a little bit at these press conferences. Because at one point, the doctor is looking at the camera like, we know who you are. You've made a fatal mistake. If you'd like to turn yourself in, please call this number. Like, he's like, we've got you. But we need some help. Turn yourself in, please. Yeah, well, that's when he calls, and that's when they can't trace the the number. Oh, this is, yeah. Um, But we're getting ahead of ourselves. But before this even even happened... um, it's established that uh, Mrs. Beck can't remember the details of the crime or people that she knows. So all of a sudden she's released from the hospital. She really might be Melania. Uh, <laughs> she's just like, I don't know what's going on and who these people are. Well, there is a guy going around grabbing pussy. So in this movie, so uh, that oh, uh, so God. there it is. <laughs> there it is. He is. This is. Oh, God. That was good. There's a. Uh, so she. Okay, so she she leaves the hospital and uh, she's driving down the road. I'll just set this up for you. Uh, she's driving down the road, and this guy in a in a is he in a pickup truck or something? He's in a jeep. He's in uh, a like jeep, a, a coverless jeep. Pulls up beside her as you know, driving alongside, and he's like, "Hey, mama," you know, like woohoo, you know. It's like, and she flips him off, and so that of course he he follows her, and I'm like, "Is this like an Italian like macho way of uh, you know? This is what you do." And I, who, who knows? But they uh, <laughs> maybe this is a cultural thing. I'm like, I mean, it's but it's funny though because like yeah, it's an Italian made movie, but it is supposed to be in like Virginia Beach. <laughs> Yeah, and so, when you were saying it was 1980s, the thing that establishes that it's the 90s is this actually has sync sound. So you are listening to people in uh, English that aren't dubbed. Right. Yes. They said they filmed it partially in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and uh, in Rome. So I'm yeah. assuming a lot of the indoor scenes or the Bruno Mattei inserts then were, uh, were shot in Rome. Um but anyway, this guy, so he follows her to her destination, which is a office of some kind. Or I, it something. looked like uh, the way the lobby was set up, it looked almost like a hotel. It was like, it, it looked like some sort of, um, I don't know, it wasn't even like an industrial building or, or like a, a commercial building. It looked like a hotel lobby. I don't That's really right, know what it was, it was to be. decorated with those poinsettias, uh, all set up for Christmas that I completely missed at this point. But thank you for pointing it out because it's true. Poinsettias all over the place. Big hint that this yeah. is a Christmas movie. Um, There's like a fully decorated Christmas tree in that lobby too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so at this point, right, we are supposed to believe that she is still suffering in uh, amnesia. Right. It's like a PTSD slash amnesia situation. Okay. So this guy uh, comes at her. Well, sorry. He goes into the building looking for her, but she's giving him the slip. I think he follows her into the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom he go, thinking yeah, she's he there. He's looking in the bathroom. Yeah. 
and she gets the drop on him because she's got a gun, which she found. That's right. It was hidden in one of the, oh man, I mean, that, that scene where she had to go through every drawer in the house to try and find the gun, drop the, you know, the bullets on the floor and all that. She was trying to fend off the attacker. And then she's like, you're dead. It shot through the wall at him. And then, he, yeah. Uh, so anyway, she forces this guy to strip and throw all of his clothes in the uh, toilet and flush them. So you then flush them. <laughs> Flush I feel, them. See, I feel like when you when you say that, it feels like you go by it through too fast. Like just the description you gave, it's just like no, it's more. It's so much more than she made him strip and then flush his clothes. Yeah, she's like, like it's an experience of the over. scene. It's so weird. <laughs> it's a really long scene, and you don't really know where it's going at first because you know, and we in a public bathroom. Yeah, and we don't know what the ending is yet. <laughs> so this is insane. It's that absolute bathroom, insanity. The bathroom definitely flooded, though, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. His clothes for were sure. stuffed in that thing. Yeah, he's like flushed them. You mean go in there and get them? That entire scene is set up for that line when she leaves. You know this. That was a line. The line. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, give it to us. <laughs> she's like, he's like, what am I supposed to? She's like, go ahead and get him out yourself. He's like. From there, and she's like, "You're you was it like you're already full of shit or something like that?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're already full of shit, you asshole, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then runs out and leaves him in his speedo, which he runs back <laughs> out to his car, his jeep where he has uh, another change of clothes because I mean, that's no, what... he walks past Danny Bonaducci at the front of this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd your clothes go? I was molested. In the little I boys' was room. In the boys' room. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was the less popular version of smoking in the boys' room. Blasted <laughs> in the boys' room. Oh no! This guy, I don't know who this actor is, but he is uh, playing it all the way. Dedicated. Uh, wait. Yeah. The this is this is Peter Hooten. Peter Hooten. Hooten. He's from. Yeah. He, we know him from Orca. Do you not remember that? Uh, <laughs> from Orca, and he's in one of the, the something else too. But yeah, was he like Peter one Hoop? of the? I'm trying to place him in Orca. He wasn't on the boat, was he? He was one of the fishing town people. He was like one of the main people in Orca, wasn't he? Um, I'm, I'm, his face looks familiar, but he was Paul. He was Paul in Orca. He was like the main dude in Orca. Oh, okay. Well, in, in under Richard Harris, and yeah, okay, well, yeah. All right, man. My memories of that movie are fading. Um, <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so, that wasn't that long ago. It was like a year ago. Yeah, watched. I know. <laughs> um, I remember Bo Derek getting her legs bitten off, sure. and the house tilting. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what about Orca miscarriage? You remember that? Oh yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. yeah. yeah. I, forgot. Yeah. I forgot. I blocked that out. <laughs> the ice flow oh. ending, and oh yeah. Oh. Orca, go back and listen to our Orca episode. Get all caught up. Um, so anyway, we cut to a beach out of nowhere. <laughs> oh yeah, he's then it turns into like a ten minute chase scene set to the uh, weirdest music in the world. He like, follows her. He like, follows her. How did he find her? She left like well before him. He wouldn't have known which way she would have gone, and he finds her at the beach. Yeah, he's just what driving around fuck? looking for her. He's like, I'm going to find her. She's at the beach with like a galaxy of pills and she's taking <laughs> them all. And, and he runs, what? he finds her and he runs down there. And what are you doing? She's like, I'm committing suicide. And uh, he says, no, you're going to have to drink seawater to wash all that up. And she's like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And he drags her in the water and literally starts drowning her in the ocean. Drink it! Drink it! It's the most the bizarre thing. What'd you say, Michaela? He waterboards her in the ocean. Yeah. Then he gives her the weird Heimlich. Uh, yeah. Where it looks like she's trying to actually, the actress looks like she's trying to actually throw up because she sticks her fingers. She does. In her yeah, mouth at yeah. one point, because I think she thinks this is like I'm going all the way. I'm an actress. I'm and it's doing like, it. Yeah, it's like I'm method. I'm going for it. Like, oh, no, that means she probably just like dry heaved a bunch, and that's way worse than actually throwing up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and like we can't. I can't describe the insanity of this scene because the, at this point, it's just the dude who drove up and decided to stalk her and has right. become relentless. Right. It's like okay, and now so is were... in 
feels like he's in charge of her. Like he's decided that for himself. Right. It's like, weren't you going to like kind of rape her? Cause it's, it's how it felt. But now you're saving her life. Like this is a tonal shift. I feel like. Yeah. I don't know how I'm reading this, but. Yeah. Well, we we, right. Are we rooting for the rapist? What's (laughs) happening here? Yeah. Cause that's kind of how it's like, okay. He was well, cringy stalker dude, at least at this point. And then he followed her into a bathroom. He so he thought he followed her to a bathroom. Well, like, cause she flipped him off. So I don't know. You know, I know, but nothing good happens when you're yeah, following yeah, yeah. into a bathroom. Yeah. Well, he, well, it gets, it escalates even further than that later on, but like now we're like, okay, so now he saved her life. So what's the dynamic between these two people going to be? She wakes up in a hotel room and then he's like, well, she's still like, you know, it's like, why'd you save me? I was doing fine on that beach. And she's got a gun. And she's like, I'm going to shoot myself with it. And he's like, go ahead. I'm going to eat fried chicken and French fries. <laughs> Colin, that is not how he delivers that line. He says, fried chicken and French fries. Fried chicken and French fries. <laughs> <laughs> Which I found super relatable. I do have been but, for fried chicken somehow, and French fries. I'm like, that somehow awesome, his was dude. more some of his was more lackadaisical than uh, I imagine yours would be, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was pretty sing-songy about it, though. He was, yeah, yeah. and uh, he loves fried chicken because uh, as she's ca- as she's got the gun to her head, he's like, "Do it! I don't care." And what I what and then, gets me off is fried chicken or whatever the fuck he says. And then it it slowly appears from the bottom of the screen <laughs> in this two Back shot close scene. up between the two of them. So this yeah. fried chicken drumstick <laughs> shows like it's up interrupting and their kiss as it just comes up and it's just like ah. Oh. But I understand that though because if I have fried chicken in front of me, everything else is taking a back seat. Yes. Oh yeah, Agreed. yeah, yeah. Agreed. That's just how it is. French fries too. And then she doesn't Absolutely. kill herself, so he takes the gun. And he's like, "Well, fine, I'll do it. I'm the one who's going to kill you. I'll, you know, I'm going to kill you whenever I feel like killing you." And then he sticks the gun in her mouth, and he's like, "That's not as good." He's like, "Come on, you can eat fried chicken or something." I was like, "What the fuck is happening in <laughs> this movie?" <laughs> So then many, I think we happenings in the chat. Is that I mean, you, like, if we had been if we had played a drinking game for every time every per, every time someone said what the fuck is happening, we would all be wasted right now. <laughs> Maybe we should yeah. post some screenshots of our group chat because it is just question marks, <laughs> laughing emojis, and what is happening over and over. I mean, certain movies like this, we should just do a commentary for because then you just hear us yelling at the screen. Well, this is basically it. You could probably like play this <laughs> along with that movie. and uh, Probably. Yeah. Um, Selected bits. Yeah, because he does, uh, we assume that he rapes her because he ties her to the bed. Uh, he leaves messages written in, I think, or she writes, you know, you kill me or you, you kill me, I kill you, or something, or I kill you, kill me, right? Yeah. Like it's written. Is she yeah. wrote that? I assume. I don't know what the fuck. She wrote that in lipstick when she was having her little beauty session. Yeah. Then he's like, "I'm gonna go out and like you know, uh, I'm gonna blow go out and steam. yeah, blow off some steam." He's got a knife and he leaves, and then we see the there's a killer scene here where the mass killer stalks somebody i'm not even sure who it was if it was the just woman a girl at a bar yeah oh oh jesus christ just, just a girl at a bar this is <laughs> this is amazing this? she this girl is like uh my mom told oh. me not to date boys like you or something like that she's like but i'm not gonna listen to her and i'm gonna you know I'm going to try this or whatever. This guy, of course, is not talking to her, which is the sign, of course, that there's something, you know, up with him. We don't see who he is. I wish we would just we could just play clips of these scenes and interactions because they're amazing. (laughs) They're amazing. She's like, what what is my mom? I said, don't look out. What the fuck was it? God damn it. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. And it's delivered in the most amazing way possible. Like completely blase. Like this performer is like I mean, just she has the screen to herself, even though there's somebody else in the shot with her who doesn't react. And they go to like a secluded room somewhere. He takes her somewhere where uh, he takes her to like an art studio. Yeah. And this is where he puts on the mask and it's like, oh, it's the killer. And uh, then he wants to play Little Red Riding Hood with her. And she has to, you know, like start re- reciting the story and he's getting and all she, hot and bothered. She's yeah. getting all hot and bothered. It seemed like, yeah. like what the, then she's like oh, grandmother, 
What a big <laughs> schlong you have. <laughs> I haven't okay, heard I need to talk while. about this. So, yes, please. Here's the problem with this role play. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right, wait, hold on. We're going to pin it down. Wait, I need a notepad. I need a notepad. Yeah, yeah take notes. It's take important, notes John. Yeah, I need to I'm know why this is wrong. Because uh, it's either incestual or it's like bestiality. Bestiality, one or the other. Yes. It's one or the other. Yeah. And either that way, putting them, they're putting themselves into that mindset. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because grandmother, what a big schlong you have. So that's like. <laughs> incestual but if you're not okay. doing that and you're going with the little red riding hood thing then that's bestiality so it doesn't work no matter what they could have picked a better situation i mean it doesn't work for you i mean it, <laughs> it looks like it's going just fine for them i mean i'll kick i'll kink shame this i will i'll be okay about that all right okay. well it doesn't work yeah. out too well for this mystery bar woman uh, because at some point she's <laughs> she like i don't like wrong. this game take me home and uh, to which point, kapow, he punches her through the chest with the uh, razor fingers. Bam, she's dead. No. <clears throat> no. No. He dips her in wax. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That's right, because he's an artist. It's weird. He's... I totally <laughs> Wait, forgot about he... this. But he kills her somehow before he dips her in wax, doesn't yeah. he? Or does he just dip her in wax? Well, he starts dipping her face in, wa- in hot wax, which yeah. is like the actress is covered in some kind of viscous fluid where you're like, does yes. that doesn't look safe? And, and, yeah, and wait, he's, he's are we sure it's not in an ornate amount of semen? Oh, no. <laughs> Seminal yeah. fluid, Sean. Seminal. Seminal fluid? No. Yeah. My, my bad. <laughs> or that, because that looked like in an ornate amount. It did. It, it, it did. was like, is yeah, this, he's it keeping did. it. Stored in a bucket somewhere, and he's dunking people in it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> then he punches her through the, the chest. Of it was pretty runny. It didn't look like thick, like wax. Oh, never That's say runny was, again. Uh. I didn't. It looked so like viscous and runny. I didn't like that. You know? It looks like it looks like a fucking Krispy Kreme. <laughs> it, Eat yeah, Krispy yeah, Kreme. Yeah, yeah. Krispy Kreme's looks, after that, folks. It yeah. does. It looks like glaze. It could have been. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's, it's an art. It's an art studio, so it could have been like a glaze, like for pottery or something. Yeah, that's why I asked. I was like, "What is that?" Because I couldn't tell at first when he was just shoving her face. Yeah, in it. yeah, it could have been like the way it was like adhering to her skin. It looked like wax once it was on her skin, but it very well could have been like a pottery glaze. It, it makes more sense that way. I think yeah, they want the "don't breathe" her out. He does punch her in the yeah because he does yeah, punch. Someone. <laughs> he does punch through her and then he covers her entire body in the stuff, but he puts yeah. the mask on her too. And yeah, and there's like, another mask in hand. Yeah. It's not explained. It's very bizarre. And you're like, okay, Bruno Mattei, that's your scene, I guess. Right. That's a uh, divorce got, from the rest of the movie. You've got mask on mask. Loving. Yeah. Well then sure. our, uh, maybe <laughs> or maybe not killer whose name later is revealed to be Axel. This is the, uh, leather jacket wearing restroom, uh, menacer, uh, returns to the hotel room, but now, um, uh, uh, uh I was going to say Melania. See now what you did to me. Uh, Melody, Melody. 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 uh, <laughs> is all dolled up and like, you know, she's into this kind of, uh, what is it? The, the Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Where she's like, I've been waiting for you to come back. And, you know, uh, she shoots through the, the wall of the hotel room, which, uh, freaks out the, the guy at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> he's an interesting character this uh, guy. <laughs> yeah um and then uh i think she does actually like stab um didn't she stab this guy no no she stabbed no, no, the other no, no, guy no. oh right right, right. Yeah, no. he, yeah, no, he, I, doesn't I he give like, her the knife and tell her that, to kill that herself was, that was a flashback later on yeah uh. Um, so confusing. I know. I did like the mo like when uh when the dude at the front desk comes to check out after she shoots the mirror and obviously you hear the gunshot throughout the hotel. When the little dude comes to check out him, he's like, "We just broke a mirror, man! Like he's superstitious. Who cares?" And then he like shoves a dollar in his glass. <laughs> yeah, it was a dollar, right? I was thinking that like he just broke your mirror in your hotel room and like, oh, don't worry, a dollar's gonna take care of it. Woo-hoo. Yeah, it was a dollar. Fuck off, nerd. they send him packing and uh so i don't remember the scene that happens here right 
because somehow we got to get, uh, oh, well, they, they do eventually leave, right? Uh, Axel, the abductor, right, has been making calls to the police because, like, everybody's looking for uh, Mrs. Beck. She's on the news. People are talking about it. This is where the, uh, the, the um, psychiatrist is giving the personal details out. Uh, the cops are hunting for her. They go to a pay phone where Axel's going to taunt the cops that he has her, and she sees that her picture is on the front page of the, the paper that she's missing, right? At the same time, we cut back to uh, the blonde dude. His name's Sherman. There we go. Sherman, the neighbor, Sherman, yeah. right? Because he is all worked up. He's in the house with his wife. His wife's gone deranged, right? Because they've basically taken in Mrs. Beck's daughter and his wife is like, she's our daughter. And he's like, he, she's not our daughter. You know? And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And, and then we find out that maybe Sherman's been having an affair with Mrs. Beck. Right. Or at least she suspects it or she suspects that he like has the hots for her or something. The way she talks, she's like, I've seen the way you look at her, the way she's, like half naked sunbathing or whatever the fuck she's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And she's kind of, it feels like she's yeah. losing her shit. And the little girl comes down. Cause she's like, I want my mom. And your Bobby's the, here. What? And she's like, you're not my mom. And there's domestic drama, psychodrama, right? Um, Italian when, style. Uh, <laughs> when Axel and, um, Melody leave the hotel room. Sean pointed out her massive hat, like beret sort of situation. Did anyone she else gets... think? Did anyone else think she kind of looked like Patty Hearst a little bit? Did anyone yes. else? Right? Uh, yeah. She looked Maybe... like Patty Hearst. I was like, is this like a mo- is this like a like a mirroring of the Stockholm syndrome with Patty Hearst? Like, is that what Probably. they're doing here? Don't give this movie that much credit. Why not? I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you it's, listen to Claudio we'll Fragrasso, and he's all very, you know, like I said, he's very adamant that uh, his movies are layered and deep. Uh, he's got all this stuff going on. So um, anyway, hat, though, yeah. Sherman, yeah, right? Sherman, the neighbor. Sherman, yeah. He's like, I'm going to go out and find this guy and I'm going to shoot him between the eyes because he's got this like, scar on his face. And this is what he did to me. And I'm going to go get him. I'm the only one who well, can. <laughs> yeah. He also beforehand, when he's when we I think first meet him, he explains his scar because I think he, they said he saved her. Right. And he also because he's talking to the news as he's walking away. He's like, if I were her, I'd kill him with my bare hands. Like <laughs> shouting things at the news, which don't seem like <laughs> things you should shout at the news. I don't think everyone's but very forthcoming a- with the news in this movie, in this movie. <laughs> sure. True. Yeah. Well, Sherman does track her down because, uh, during the phone call, right. Where Axel's taunting the police, uh, Melody gets, lo- or, you know, sees the paper, starts running down the street. Sherman shows up because I mean, that's all you have to do in Virginia, Virginia beach. Is just Virginia beach is a very small town. Clearly. Drive around long enough. You're going to find what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. That should maybe be on a t-shirt. Anyway, she, uh, so he finds her and he's like, Melody, get in the car. We're, I'm going to take you home. And so he shoves her in the car and they drive back to her house where he immediately leaves her. Right. And this is a woman with trauma, obviously who is staring at him with vacant eyes and doesn't seem to know what the hell's going on. And he's like, here, I'm going to give you these keys. And I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go find the police or do something. And Lock so- yourself in the yeah. house which is which what is, happened earlier did we talk about that earlier yeah <laughs> yeah so basically the, the cop was like the like, earlier when, when she first got the, the obscene oh we didn't talk about the obscene phone call oh why did we talk about that like i said too much in this movie to remember i really <laughs> so much shit happens i cannot remember it all at the very beginning when she gets like the very first call and she calls the cops and the cop was like please tell me about your oh, obscene yeah. phone call Tell me what yeah, he, what please, say, describe your obscene phone call very slowly and in great detail. <laughs> no, he didn't actually, he didn't say that verbatim, but his attitude was that <laughs> the way he asked her about it was like, he was personally interested. Yeah. yeah. There was some, he was a little like, Oh, please do tell. But then, yeah. and then he was like, <laughs> he was like, lock yourself in the house and I'm going to call you back in five minutes. So I feel like he was like preparing himself for the next phone call. You know what I mean? He's getting his pants off. Right. (laughs) Putting on cologne, straightening his tie. 
Yeah, because she does immediately get a phone call from the Night Stalker who says, I'm back, you know, and it's basically set up the scene in which she first encountered the Night Stalker and then uh, encountered the or had the traumatic experience and lost her memory. And she looks out the window and she does see what I thought was blatantly obvious Sherman in a black trench coat at the uh payphone across the street and then yeah, it was the uh the killer shows up in the house and takes his mask off and reveals to the world that the killer is no one other than sherman we're <laughs> 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 like oh okay sherman and um so she begins to she has uh is this where she has flashbacks he, uh, Sherman proceeds to like refresh her memory of what happened because she clearly has amnesia and he's like, well, this is what happened. If in case you forgot, cause I want you to know every detail because that's what happens in movies. But so right. he tells her like what happened and then we see her vision of remembering what happened. But this ends differently than the last time because this time she's actually able to get the knife and stabs him in the balls. Yes. When she went for the knife, I was like, oh, I hope she stabs him in the dick. And then she did. I and I was like, oh, my <laughs> God, yes. It was very satisfying. I was I, I was impressed. And I was also thinking, I was like, okay, I feel like the fact that she's lost her shit is what's making her like maintain like total composure right now. I feel like in in any other situation she would not be handling it that well, but her total composure right. was the fact that she's gone batshit crazy, right? I was gonna say because she's completely insane. Yeah, the craziness of the situation is not affecting her. Right, exactly. And she's able to get through it. Yeah, but I agree yeah. with you because I was like, oh god, please stab him in the junk, and she did, and it was so satisfying. Yes. Then comes possibly the greatest action scene in the movie. <laughs> Wait, who came now, in for? Oh no, no, that's right, because because Sherman. Being stabbed in the dick gets a hold of the gun. He has the gun. He's got a gun. Yeah. He's got a gun. So he's going to shoot her. Melanie. He's going to shoot her. But then but. through the window <laughs> comes a character Crashing who we through. still only know as a creepy stalker. Jumps through the window, does a cop roll, and yeah, shoots. Cop roll. Oh man, he like I, landed in slow motion. He like went through the window, yeah. did the roll, came he, up like, and pow, su- pow, yeah. pow. He somersaults yeah. through the window and like rolls across yeah. the floor. Yeah. He's and comes halfway up. through a spin as he's going through the window. Yeah. Yeah. It's he's amazing. a professional. <laughs> Fucking blast that guy like eight times. We also, you know, as the as uh as uh, Sherman is holding the gun on Melody. I was reminded of like, how come she just doesn't turn around and go out the door? It's because she's locked all the doors. She can't figure out how her own goddamn locks work to leave. <laughs> this happened earlier in this movie where it's like, help. She's banging on the help me, help me. It's like, all you got to do is, you know, turn that, turn the lock. Well, this is the same situation as Halloween four where they're stuck in the house because they locked the metal. It's metal. God damn it. It's door. metal. Yeah. Right. It means we're trapped in this house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Houses just, are weird, man. <laughs> so Axel comes in, saves the day, Axel, blasts the clear his, hero of the movie. <laughs> yeah, blasts this motherfucker away, and then, uh, <laughs> then it is revealed that Axel is her husband, her estranged husband. Better island ending. Yeah. yeah. Has been the whole time. <laughs> so this kind of like, okay, so so my take on this is you got to help me out, but they do. Okay. They so they had some kind of um, you know, um sadomasochistic relationship, right? Prior to her amnesia. <laughs> See, that's that. that's what I'm unclear of, because at the end of the movie, they're laying in bed, like kind of rehashing the whole thing. And he's like, it killed me to have to do that with you. And it killed me to like have to treat you that way and to not be able to touch you like normally touch you. So I'm like, OK, so this is out of character for them. So I feel like it's not their normal relationship. OK, so the whole time her husband was trying to get her to remember him by playing the the taking on the right. psyche of the guy who uh, stalked and attacked her right the doctor said that his theory was we have to have her relive 
the trauma in order to face the trauma and get over it. That was his yeah, theory. That fucking doctor. Quack. <sighs> <laughs> was he wearing a beret? I felt like he was wearing a beret. I think he was wearing a fedora, wasn't he? Uh, Something. He, he, had was, a hat. he was definitely uh, wearing, wearing the, the long uh, yellowish trench coat, right? Yes, uh, he was Dr. Sure. Luminous, yes. Yeah. He was. He was yeah. balding and had a beard and all that. Got to explain yeah. all the psychology of this movie to us. Um, it's just a theory of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, basically, it's just a theory of mine, but if we rape her again, she should remember it all. Yeah, that was so that's his, <laughs> that's, that's his that's plan. It. Yeah. That's it. So the husband abducted her, attacked her, held her, uh, and called the cops and taunted them. Had a f- had a five this minute was, like face to face scene in the middle of the movie. This was clearly at a time when people thought that just because it was your spouse, it wasn't rape. No, no, that's still <laughs> rape. Sorry, but it is. <laughs> it's well, and more importantly, she doesn't know that he's her spouse at that point. You know. Yeah. So I feel like that's so more wait. traumatic. Yeah, in the process of him having her go through this, is she now not going to have traumatic memories of him? Right. Because he put her through it again? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, does does she... I don't know. I, I, I feel like... I don't know. This, I don't know. And why did he call you, her you at the beginning? Know, no, I don't. I don't know. But see, this is why I say this is some kind of weird sadomasochistic. And maybe it isn't. Maybe, maybe, he was, maybe they were estranged. Maybe he was off in that bar at the beginning where he made the phone call and talked like, you know, what are you doing today, Melody? Um, and, and broke the glass because he was so angry that she hung up on him. And that's when she was doing the topless thing in front of the, the mirror. It's like, what the fuck was actually happening there? Because did she think that it was him calling and saying, like, I can see you now when she was turning around and exposing herself to the window and stuff like Did she think it was so, him? I guess that's so why I think there was some kind of weird relationship there. So basically what you're saying is this entire thing saved her marriage, right? Is that what you're saying, Colin? Apparently it does, because at the end, I mean, it was like, wow, these are two different people than what we've been watching the whole way through the movie. They're in bed together and they're like, hey, you know, yeah. And Clarissa, I hope Clarissa is going to be, you know, okay with this. Uh, who knows? I'm worried about her, you know. And we see Clarissa on, uh, this is the 13-year-old daughter on Christmas morning, gets a big-ass box. She's very excited about the box. We keep cutting back and forth. And it's Who'd like, she get what? it from? Who did she get it from? Sherman. At the, at the at the beginning of the movie, Sherman drops off her Christmas present. It's from Sherman. Oh shit! I totally yeah. forgot that during yeah. the sitcom opening. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, around there, yeah. Okay, so yeah, Sherman has Sherman. sent her this box, and there's suspense. We build up to what's in the box. She opens the box. <laughs> And it's like, and we cut back to the couple in bed and they're like, I think she's going to be time will heal everything and she'll forget about it. And she'll everything be, will be just fine. fine. <laughs> and then she opens the box and what's in the box. Well, we don't know what's in the box, but then we I see had... her mirror in her bedroom and she pops up much like the chicken did. And she's wearing the mask. And she's I'm like, back, Mrs. Beck. Yeah. Honestly, I was kind of disappointed. It was a mask. I was hoping it was going to be like a head or something like that, you know. Yeah. If someone had, if someone had been decapitated earlier in the movie, right? But, yeah, you got to set that up. He's sending yeah, her body parts or something. But the implication yeah. is that she's not okay. This thing is tra- traumatized her, and she's going to be the next night killer. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> This is a yeah, it's a strange one. Don't open that door, that door part four. four. <laughs> <laughs> was there a part? Uh, was there a don't open that door part four? I don't. The think new so. beginning? No. What was the what was the fourth? Next generation. The, the other side of the door. <laughs> well, it would have been the next generation, right? It would have been Texas Chainsaw Massacre four. Maybe that was their fifth one in Italy. Maybe, Maybe Leatherface was uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre four. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Well, all right. Well, listener, <laughs> let us tell you if we would recommend that you watch this amazing piece of uh, cinema. But first of all, we're going to have to answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail! So many letters, our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. <laughs> so many things to choose from this movie. I don't know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wearing that crazy hat. He's not wearing the black leather with oh, his hair he all slicked be. back. I was like, he should be wearing that big beret. He would look good in that hat. <laughs> yeah, he should wear that. He could pull it off. <laughs> all right. Well, we want to remind you how you can participate in this segment of the Saturday Night Freak Show. All you got to do is jump on over and follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie Night Killer. Novato Judoka writes in and says, to quote Samuel L. Jackson, hold on to your butts on this one, folks. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Novato Judoka has seen the movie, clearly. Has uh, Nelson Nascimento? Yes, he has, because he quotes, die, you bastard, which is, oh, that's what she shot through the door. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he says it's not quite as good of a delivery in the mo- as in the movie Pieces. Oh, yeah, right. you got to go back and listen to our Pieces episode. Uh, he says this movie borrows anything and everything <laughs> from other slashers slash giallos, including what appears to be a Cropsy slash Freddy hybrid talking a la Black Christmas in the first act. You get, you're get sure to get a couple of laughs out of this one. Definitely. More yeah. than a couple. Plenty of laughs. Uh, Plenty of laughs. Uh, Owen Johnson says Night Killer, a.k.a. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, is a... Uh, uh, is a motherfucking masterpiece. Claudio Fagrasso and Bruno Mattei, the two horsemen of the apocalypse, should be proud of this movie. There's just so much goodness in this movie. The restroom scene, the beach scene, and of course the killer that punches holes in his victims. What more could you ask for? Oh, and Mrs. Beck caressing her boobs and talking about how her marriage is on the rocks. I could go on and on about this movie, but I love it. It's earned a spot on my Blu-ray shelf. I just hope you guys love it, or at least enjoy it, and not critically pan the movie, or your career is over. <laughs> I'm gonna guess the Blu-ray was either put out by Severin or Vinegar Syndrome. Severin. 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 There you go. Yeah. Not there's no. Com- there's no commentary on it though. So. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm disappointed. I need someone to explain something to me. Denied. Well, Panda Thug 86 was asking. Uh, Tell me where I can find this movie. It looks amazing. So there you go. It's on uh, Blu-ray, courtesy of Severin. It's also on Tubi right now, and uh, we saw a really bad version of it on YouTube. We did because I didn't want to watch ads. That's yeah. 360p. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. Blurrow Vision, Some but great P. We suffer for our art. Um, <laughs> last week we watched the movie called Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Mike Whoa. Welch right in wrote in and said, "I watched Billy the Kid versus Dracula on a Sunday afternoon in the late seventies and thought it was super boring. Also, the ending with the scream was lame. I was like seven. Wow, I mean, if even a seven-year-old doesn't find it enjoyable, then it's really for no one. Yeah, and in the 70s. Just like, me. <laughs> uh, Just me. Well, Robin, Robin Linderman Silverberg says, oh my God, this is the first scary movie, in quotes, I ever saw on a local late-night creature feature show, and it scared the fuck out of me when I was four. <laughs> <laughs> he was four, Holly. I don't care. Do you know the shit I watched when I was four? There was nothing scary about it for at any age. Yeah, no. I was watching way scarier shit when I. Had yeah, that, for sure. it's terrifying in its own Ghostbusters way. Ghostbusters is scarier than that. Well, you Ghostbusters. Got, you got the stare of John Carradine and that uh, with the red glow. I didn't freak anybody out. He's looking right through the TV at you. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called The Haunted Palace. Bill Hainer says it was mentioned on this week's episode that Lovecraft's Pikmin's model would work better as a Twilight Zone episode. So I just thought I'd mention that it was adapted on the Rod Serling Night Gallery show with Bradford Dillman of Piranha, no less. Thank you. I will definitely mm. be checking that out. Cause yeah, I said that Gentlemen. was a Lovecraft story. So I'll yeah. definitely watch I it. I thought I had mentioned that, but maybe I didn't. Uh, Pat Hetfield also said to whomever said she liked Pikmin's model, it was adapted as a seventies episode of night gallery. If you're interested. And the other thing I wanted to bring up was that I think other AIP Lovecraft adaptation you were trying to remember was the shuttered room with Oliver Reed. Um, they actually did. Uh, they also did the Dunwich horror 
uh, was another AIP Lovecraft, uh, actual Lovecraft title. And uh, Pat also says, actually, it was Mario Bava's Black Sunday, not Black Sabbath, that had Barbara Steele being burned at the stake. And that is a mistake on my part. You think of one movie and another title comes out of your mouth. <laughs> God damn it, Colin. <laughs> very similar titles. That's true. Uh, yes. <laughs> Maya Madsen <laughs> says, uh, when I think Roger Corman, the thing that springs to mind is Poe, also Velvet Smoking Jack. It's, but specifically, it's the wine tasting battle between Vincent Price and Peter Laurie and the Black Cat. It certainly leaves an impression. That's in uh, it's a wine tasting battle. Oh, it's hilarious. It's played for comedy. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's in uh, Twice Holes. No, uh, Tales of Terror. Trilogy of Terror. Tales of Terror. I there need, you go. I need. To, I just want to see that scene. Someone just send me that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, um, send it to me. <laughs> but she also says Thulu is one of the two acceptable pronunciations of the word that I'm going to say is Cthulhu in my household. The other being the relatively recent Cthulhu with a barely pronounced K and a slightly drawled U. There is only one other acceptable pronunciation and puny human speech organs can't handle it. My kids will tell you I'm deadly serious about this. <laughs> Thank That's you. Awesome. Maya will try it. Cthulhu. <laughs> Cthulhu. Uh, because that's what they said in the movie. Thulu. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I remember the Vincent Price Tylex commercials. I'm also pretty sure that was my introduction to him until the 13 Ghosts of Scooby Doo. Honestly, I'd convinced myself that it was just an impersonator in the commercials, and I'm surprised to find out it was actually him. That's right. You got to look those up. Vincent yeah. Price Tylex commercials. He also did a bunch, but because it was always like scary mold and whatever else that, you know, Tylex <laughs> can take care of. Scary mold. Yeah. Eliminate it. I yeah. got to say, I watched a bunch of those and they're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that brings us to the most exciting portion. Oh, and thank you all very much for both listening and for writing in. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and yeah. now we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, which was Night Killer, starting with Michaela. Michaela, you're going first tonight. What did you think of Night Killer, a.k.a.? Don't close the door three, <laughs> aka. Por si te te cototo three. No, no, pre que la porta three. There you go. That three. <laughs> I mean, with Italian stuff, it's not usually my thing. Um, usually I find things I like about it, but it's never enough for me to recommend it. Um, this movie, like, once I opened up the YouTube link and saw, like, the quality level we were dealing with, I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is Samurai Cop level insanity so i was like all right i i'm i'm definitely nowhere to set my expectations now um, i yeah it's man so much shit happened in this movie and I, I don't even know what my favorite part was because so much happened i mean the fried chicken stuff is definitely at the top but there's so much stuff we don't even remember I know. Yeah. Right? Like, I feel like it's already leaving my brain and that makes me sad, but <laughs> there you go. That's it right there. If you're sad, it's leaving your brain. <laughs> right. Um, I, I wish every movie we could bring could be as ridiculous and as hilarious as this. I really wish I could have watched this with you guys. Cause I know me we too. were all laughing separately and I, yeah. it would have been a good communal watch. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I don't understand why this isn't like a midnight movie staple you know why are people not mm -hmm. watching this like in crowds at theaters all the time together um oh my god it's insane it's i feel like i could make a higher budget movie myself with you guys you know <laughs> like it's crazy <laughs> low budget and crazy amateur but these are all reasons to watch it so i think you absolutely have to like see it to believe it if for no other reason but even by yourself like i mean we all watched it separately and we had a great time so you definitely got to check it out. It's just, I'm sure it sounds like we're exaggerating some stuff, but we're really not. And I feel like we probably <laughs> forgot a lot of things already that we should have mentioned. So I think you definitely, definitely have to check it out. Sean. Uh, <clears throat> this movie. Um, I think this movie, I think at this point in the freak show in our <laughs> tenure, um, I think it's decided that we should all be watching more Italian horror films. Uh, I, know Amen, that make Colin happy. Amen. I know that make Colin happy. Amen. I know that make Colin happy, but I mean, we keep just getting winners, and for some reason or another, it's never. I mean, it's always interesting. 
Let's put it that way. I'm not going to say it's never boring because even this film lost me a little bit in the middle there. But my God, the previous hour that you've listened to us, I don't think we it does not accurately describe the insanity in this movie. Absolute insanity. Um, I've never been more lost yet more uh, <laughs> more in with a movie. I don't think in my life because I, mean, I have no idea what's going on. But I'm just like, where does this go? Where does this end up? Um, I, I think Michaela's kind of right. I'm kind of sad it is leaving my brain. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's an insane movie. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, I think you have to watch it. I don't, this, it, it's insane. It's just insane. It, it blew my mind. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying good or bad. I'm saying you just should watch it. So, yeah, definitely watch this movie. Um, watch watch it in Italian for all I care. Just watch it. It's uh, it's <laughs> it's insane. Um, so yeah, that's a uh, uh, thumbs up from me. Uh, Colin, what did you think about this movie? I thought this was bad movie gold. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, because it's just hilarious i mean you know again it's one of those movies that you uh you know we're always trying to find these i think on the freak show you know i mean because we watch decent movies and then they're in some ways harder to review because you got to go like oh now i have to grade it according to like you know is this a, you know it's a good movie what's the grade for a good movie bad movies have like a different grade right because by all standards of respectable film criticism this is a terrible awful horribly done <laughs> movie yes but entertainment value see that's what we're looking at entertainment value on this one is fucking sky high uh it was just um yeah i mean from start to finish and that's i mean god bless those italians and i mean this is the thing that you get from like the italian cinema they're just they got balls uh, because yeah i mean that's part of it they will do anything right you know, like they'll do <laughs> anything in order to be entertaining and uh it's a i mean there's a there's a connoisseurship i think that has to happen before you know i don't know where you jump into these things but you know you, you watch enough of them and i think that's what i'm kind of hearing from the freak show right <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's kind of working <laughs> finally after how many years it's like yeah, these are a special kind of, uh, you know, movie that's not made anymore. And like we said before, Italy doesn't really have a film industry anymore. They make stuff for TV now and their, you know, productions are, uh, you know, uh, they're better. You know, I mean, they've gotten better at what they do, but there was something in the air, you know, especially in the 70s, the 80s. And this is at the tail end of that, at the early 90s that, you know, just came off with some of these like, oh, man. I mean, this to me, the movie that this uh, I think should be on like a double bill with for the cycle. I, you got to watch a movie called The Devil's Honey by Lucio Fulci, which will kind of like also be like, what the fuck is. Yeah. Um, but I laughed my ass off a lot through this you know i mean this is kind of like uh in the in the it is like i think because it was mentioned pieces you know it's not as gory as pieces which i think was also like part of the the appeal of that movie but mm. the style kind of and the just tone deafness of the earnest but like i said tone deaf performances the script the, the the plot you know devices and all that and you're just like what are you thinking you know <laughs> like what's going through these people's heads when they came up with like uh some of these the rationales for some of this stuff uh yeah i think for uh you know if you were you know gonna you kick it back on bad new movie night you should put uh night killer uh somewhere near the top of your list holly what do you think of tonight's or had you seen it before you said you only saw how did <laughs> how did you find this okay so i knew i you you just get to the point where you're like you know what i gotta bring something gold you know like i've brought the ones that i've brought lately like they've been okay some of them are kind of boring some of them, i'm like you know what it's time we need another miami connection we need another you know we need another laugh and i had remembered um funny uh funny that we that i mentioned i remembered uh johnny new jersey who recommended miami connection had written to me and had and was like hey have you ever heard of night killer and i went back and looked at it after his recommendation 
And I pulled up the trailer and I was like, holy shit. And then I watched the first like, you know, five minutes and I shut it off. I was like, this is it. It's happening. We're watching this. Hey, and last time that <laughs> happened, it was Eli Wallach trying to dissolve his balls in oil. And look what we got. <laughs> no, but, but Johnny New Jersey is the one that recommended Miami Connection. He also uh. recommended Samurai Cop. I'm like, mm, we could because I I'm still like I was still on the fence of Samurai Cop. Like it didn't totally do it for me. I recommended it. But I was like, eh, it's kind of boring. But Miami Connection, classic episode. Um, so I was like, okay, I think I can trust him on this. I'm after watching like the intro of the movie, I was like, I, I think this is going to be it. Um, and then I saw that it was Italian. I was like, well, Colin's going to be so proud of me. <laughs> oh. I knew he would be. Um, but yeah, I, I watched enough of it. I was like, I want to share the experience with you guys. So I didn't watch the whole thing, but I saw enough of it. I was like, yeah, this is going to be good. And then looking into research on it, there's really not a lot out there, which I wasn't surprised when I found out that there's no like special features on the Blu-ray or anything. Um, yeah. So there's not a ton out there to do research on it, but it it definitely did it for me. I think this is my new favorite comedy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one you got to show crazy. other people. Like, like <laughs> come on, you got to come over and watch Night Killer. <laughs> oh, man. Holly, you know what puts these below Miami Connection? And, or what puts, yeah, like, the reason why Miami Connection is number one is because it has that great monologue, right? Neither yeah. of these have a good monologue scene that you can make fun of, you know? <laughs> True, the monologue scene is it, and there was, I mean, I don't want to talk a lot about Samurai Cop because we already did, but like that one to me was just boring. It was ridiculous enough that you kind of got to experience how ridiculous it is, but it was still kind of boring, and not much happened. Enough happens in this that it keeps us going. Like Sean, you know, mentioned that it does slow down in the middle a little bit and loses you a little bit, but it brings you back. The absurdity brings you back pretty quick because it is bonkers. It is bad shit crazy, and I was a little nervous because what i was reading i knew that like the killer he was kind of a one-trick pony we were only going to see the same gore over and over again so i was a little nervous about that but it's like we're here for the absurdity and that pays off it's just ridiculous it is bananas and it it, it stays with you like you really don't know where it's going and we've watched enough italian cinema that we get to <coughs> we get to the end and i'm just like i didn't know what was happening and i didn't enjoy that i enjoyed not knowing what was happening in this like it was just i was here for the ride it was ridiculous and i definitely think you should check it out i think it was it it paid off for me it it lived up to the hype that i was that i had built up in my mind cuz i was the whole week i was like i cannot wait we are going to have so much fun with this and i'm so glad that it it went as well as i hoped um so yeah anyone who ever asks like hey do you take recommendations clearly we do this was a listener recommendation we will uh if we don't get to you we will get to you in january we're going to start taking submissions for listener choice month in december so yeah, give us our next night killer because it's a blast. And we want more of it for sure. Go watch it. Recommend more. Uh, so that's All I have to say is approved. I have I have three years until we can revisit Shocking Dark. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no. I've got the countdown going. I'm going to be sick no. that day. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. We can just re-listen I, was, to the episode. This was the redemption, Sean. This was the redemption. This is redemption? I think I should get the redemption, get. but okay. No. <laughs> the director gets it, not you. <laughs> all right so uh that's unanimous uh you gotta watch night night killer maybe see so you're saying like how come people aren't watching this it's because we're now like the sales of this is gonna go through the roof because we're telling yes. people you gotta check yeah, out next night week killer. bloody disgusting we'll write an article about why you should watch night killer <laughs> <laughs> the forgotten yeah. 90s uh <laughs> italian horror movie okay so uh next week uh for our first post Halloween episode, which we're gonna watch <laughs> before Halloween, uh, is Michaela. Yes. What are we watching next week? We are gonna stay in the '90s, and we are going to watch the original Wishmaster. Oh, Ooh, good choice. <laughs> Okie doke. All right, Wishmaster. Yeah, was very nervous for a second there, and then he's, I saw the release. We're staying in the nineties. <laughs> no, you just watch. It's all turning now. We're gonna start picking the Italian horror movies. Colin's gonna start picking nineties shit. The world's gonna be weird. <laughs> 
Uh, I know. Yeah. Cause then I'm like, Oh, I don't have to do that anymore. It's happening naturally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's next week. Then we hope you'll join us for Wishmaster on the Saturday night freak show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.